Stran, risk appetite trades are likely to undergo a correction, and this would, would engulf all asset classes, including the currency market. Uh, however, in the medium term, say by the end of the year, the broad trend we have seen so far this year is going to persist with uh, emerging Asian effects, for instance, uh, continuing to gain uh, against the US dollar, and the Japanese yen probably being the only Asian currency that's likely to decline, ending the year at 103. Yeah, but when you look at the, uh, the whole universe of Asian currencies, since crisis lows, we, we've seen the free-floating currencies up, so are the, uh, the managed regimes, and even those with the near pegs to the US dollar. Why is that? Uh, exactly. The uh, currencies that uh, are relatively freely floating, such as the Korean won, the, the Aussie, the Kiwi, uh, have appreciated uh, by almost 30% against the greenback since the beginning of the year uh, because money has uh, returned to the areas that are known for either fast economic growth or relatively high interest rates. And also because uh, the gains of uh, commodity prices so far this year, which have been mind-boggling, have boosted the fortunes of the Australian dollar. Uh, however, uh, as we saw last year when the Aussie was plunging sort of ahead of the commodity uh, curve, a similar uh, process may, may be happening right now where the currency market is moving faster uh, than the commodity market. And I think that very little upside is left for the Australian currency, which is likely to end the year only at uh, 0.80 versus the US dollar. Darius, let's look at the whole situation from the perspective of the Federal Reserve, of these uh, old central banks around the world taking their cue from them. And former Treasury official John Taylor, who devised a formula for rate setting based on the outlook for inflation and growth, says, uh, according to his calculations, we may not have much time left before the Fed actually has to start removing excess reserves and start raising those interest rates again. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, we continue to maintain the view that we had uh, in our annual forecast uh, published in December last year that uh, the Fed will start hiking rates in December this year. And this is going to be uh, something that may actually happen even sooner, uh, although I would still go for December because uh, we are quite bullish on the U.S. economic growth. Uh, in Q3, U.S. GDP is going to start rising, and not just timidly as most uh, forecasters predict, but uh, but very sharply, uh, something that is going to carry on to the fourth quarter. Uh, and as commodity prices are also rebounding, inflationary pressures uh, will begin to mount, and the Fed has to act by the end of this year. Darius, thank you very much for these insights. Good to talk to you as always. And still lots more to come.